but if they're not highlighted or if, if there's some highlighted, you don't have to know, and there's some maybe not highlighted. So make sure the list that you look at is the list like, like sitting here, okay? Um, well, let's go through the muscles of the facial expression. Most of these are facial expression, all right? Um, some of these, this, this, this group is probably one of the easier groups, I think, all right? So occipital frontalis, okay? I'm going to call people. I'll make sure you're engaged, okay? So, Jaden, give me one bone that the occipital frontalis is associated with. Occipital. So, occipital bone. What's the other bone, uh, Karis? Yeah, you do. Occipital frontalis. Frontal See? bone, exactly. All right? This is the bone. This is, I'm sorry. This is the muscle. All right? It extends from the occipital bone. covers goes across your scalp. All right? To the frontal bone. And it inserts in the skin around the eyebrow. Now, then your action's already up here, or your movement. But if you think about it, if it's anchored in the occipital bone, and it's pulling on the skin around your eyebrows, what are you doing when you use the occipital frontalis? Raising your eyebrows. You're raising your eyebrows. Now, some people can independently, some people can't. I can only do one side. I mean, I can do my left side up and push my right one down. I can't do it the other way. Right. You know, yeah. but, <laughs> but anyway, right? So occipital frontalis originates from the occipital bone, starts in the skin around the eyes, it raises the eyebrows, it looks like this. All right, and when I do the demonstrated movements, I will tell you, I'll say, all right, which, which muscle does this movement? And I'll say, look at my face, look at my leg, look at my arm. You know, I'll tell you where to focus in case I make some you know, random twitchy movement uh, so that you know what I'm looking at. And then I'll say from here to here, okay? I'll say from here to here, and that's the movement that's being made. Orbicularis oculi, orbicularis oris, all right? So which one's associated with the eye? The oculi, okay? Orbicularis oculi, orbicularis oris, oral, okay? Um, the orbicularis oculi, both of them are circular muscles, all right? There it is right here, okay? It completely surrounds the eye. Orbicularis oris completely surrounds the lips. Orbicularis um, oculi, and it is, originates from the maxilla and the frontal bone, okay? So maxilla, right, and the frontal bone. Skin around the eyes, and it closes the eyes. But it's not, I, I probably should edit that. It doesn't just do this. It does this. Like you're squeezing your eyes shut. That's what the orbicularis oculi does. It squeezes the eyes shut. Like you're a little kid and you're like, oh, you can't see me because, you know, remember that? Remember when you're little, I don't know, remember the little kids? If if they can't see you, they also think you can't see them. You know? You ever seen that? Hmm? Puppies are the same way. Kind of um, so orbicularis oculi. Okay, orbicularis oris, maxilla, and the mandible, all right, skin around the lips, and it closes the lips, and, but it's kind of the same thing. It's kind of like closing them tight, all right, so it's almost like pursing your lips a little bit, all right, that little, that little, those little photos that girls do sometimes, and they make the little kissing, you know, <laughs> the duck, whatever, it's like, you know, what's the new pose now? They do this, and they turn around, and, you know, whatever. <laughs> Oh, this is a great. This is. A, I mean, this one. You know, whatever. Wait, wait, wait. Show the little shoulder. Wait, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. So if I said, if I was asking about the regular chorus, I'd say, all right, which muscle does this? Look at my face from here to here. I mean, I'll make it. I'll, I'll do obvious. I mean, stick my neck out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then I'll say, look at my lips. Uh, you can say. But but in all honesty, the bussinator, and I've like gone back and forth how to uh, enunciate this. Uh, it's either bussinator, bucinator, bucinator. I don't know. Anyway, bucinator. It does kind of a it like. It's not the lip so much, but what it does is it flattens your cheeks like when you whistle. Like, okay. when you're flattening your cheeks, 
That's oh. what the buzzinator does. Okay. Um, guys, I I will ask no more than I'll probably ask no more than one of these. So it'll be obvious. You know, does that make sense? Because if I'm only going to probably do five movements, I'm I'm not going to do like two of these and three of all the other. You know what I'm saying? So I'll probably just do one of these. So it'll probably be pretty obvious. Okay. Um, yes, ma'am. Just five demonstrations. Yeah. Wait, how many points do you need to do that? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's like one and a half points per objective question. So I'll have like, I won't have all the muscles listed. I'll have maybe like a dozen to 15 listed. So you'll choose from that group which movement I'm doing. And it should be, if you know it, it should be very obvious. Okay. Um, but again, Bustinator. Look, it has the same origin as the Bicularis orus, right? But its insertion is slightly different. So the orus is all the way around the lips, whereas the bustinator is just the corner lips, and it's kind of like pulling it in. All right? So when you do like a fish face, so you're flattening your cheeks, like when you're whistling or so that duck lips kind of thing, your Bicularis orus does more of this, whereas the Fascinator does more of that. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, Psychomaticus, we went over this one yesterday. Cannot guarantee you that will be one of the movements I do, but I kind of like to do it because it creeps everybody out when I do this. You know, Your just... eyebrow twitch. <laughs> Your eyebrow twitch. Okay, I'm like, I'm like, okay. I gotta be still. Is that better? <laughs> you gotta tilt your head I down a little creepy. too. <laughs> you know, the clown look. <laughs> All right, the creepy clown smile. All right, so the zygomatic bone. So this one's named after the bone it uh, originates from, right? Okay, corner of the lips. And again, when the muscle always pulls on the insertion, and it always pulls it back toward the origin. So if, even though the origin insertion is the hardest thing to learn, if you learn that first, the action just kind of makes sense. Does that make sense? All right, it just it's just logical. So the origin is what the bone the muscle is associated with, and then the insertion is where the muscle pulls. Correct, but both of these could possibly be bone. <coughs> both of them are not always bone, but origin is always bone, I think. Insertion, most of the time is bone, but with facial expression, it's actually pulling on, not bone, but it's pulling on skin. That's why you get all these different you know, facial expressions. You know? And a lot of times you can read people. And the older you get, the better you get at reading people, you know. Um, and it just comes with experience. It also comes with brain development. But a lot of times people come in, and I'm like, hey, you doing okay? And they're like, how do you know anything wrong? Well, I could just read facial expressions. Um, you know, I have a good friend of mine who's going through a really, really, really hard time. And I saw him the other day, and I was like, it's like your face looks better this week. He goes, what? And I was like, I was like, you know, I could tell you were having a rough week last week. Because his facial, he just looked, he just looked kind of generally sad or, you know, hurting, you know. Anyway. All right. Um, temporalis and masseter, right? Temporalis is associated with what bone? Temporal bone, okay? So it originates in temporal bone. It inserts itself in the mandible, all right? So, and the masseter also inserts itself in the uh, mandible, and it does the same thing. It's closing the jaw. Like when you're... What? Probably. I mean, because you use it so much to talk, to chew. For pound for pound, I think it's actually the tongue that might be the strongest pound for pound or size. But the jaw is very strong. And in some animals, like an alligator or a shark, it's massively strong. But it's kind of funny because, you know, you lose that strength in your jaw a little bit as you get older. That's why a lot of times you see older people when they're sleeping, they're, you know. <laughs> they're, they're <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I mean, a lot of times they're like, That's why does. you know. And I, oh, I hate when I wake up and I feel like my mouth's open. I'm like, oh, man, I'm an old man. <laughs> so, anyway, um, but you look at the ori origin, it's just a little different. It's coming from the same direction, but like the... Temporalis is coming from the temporal bone. Masseter is coming from the zygomatic arch.
H. Okay, so that's the temporal and zygomatic process. Y'all remember that? Okay, remember the temporal process is coming from the zygomatic bone and the zygomatic process from the temporal bone. Okay, so it's coming from that, those, you know, the process is there. And it starts right there. So there's the masseter, there's the temporalis, there's the zygomaticus. Guys, don't worry about it. Zygomaticus major and minor. Don't worry about that. Okay, it's all in that same general place. Okay, bussinator. It's running this way, but it's a little bit deeper of a muscle. It's a little deeper. Okay? All right? Um, and, okay, I'm going to go over these, and then we'll be done. So you're going to have time to process. I'm not going to go over all of them real fast and cover me. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go over a few a day, all right? And uh, give me time to process. All right, splenius capitis is this muscle right here. I think it's actually identified in your book. This illustration actually comes from the, the college prep book. So it's just called deep neck muscles. But I think in your book it's actually identified as splenius capitis. Um, it originates from the spinous process of some cervical and thoracic vertebrae. You don't have to know which ones in this case. Um, but it originates from there. It inserts itself in the mastoid process. Where's the mastoid process? Right here. Okay. In the occipital bone, all right. What? Um, cervical and thoracic vertebrae. Okay. Maybe you should have put T H O R. I abbreviate a lot. Yes, ma'am. Um, this one. Most of these muscles are like at least associated with the neck. They don't necessarily move. That. They either move the head or the scapula. Like the trapezius, that's kind of a tricky one because even though it's up here, all right, this muscle right now, you don't stand up and everybody tell them you want me to reach for traps. But you ever heard of traps? All right, that's your trapezius right there. But it actually goes, it covers a lot of a lot of the upper part of your back as well. Okay, um, so this is that muscle. It's got a lot of. You feel that? All right, it's got a nerve. Like some people have a, uh, it's more tender than other people. All right, when people squeeze that on me, it just tickles. I don't know why. It just tickles. It doesn't really hurt. All right, so let's talk about splenius capitis a little bit, okay? So since it originates, all right, uh, yeah, so no, no, no. So if it, if it originates from here, okay, and inserts itself here and here, so if this is the anchor, what are you going to do with your head? You're going to look up, look up. See how it's pulling? All right? That's, that's what you do with splenic cup. You just extend. Now, that's called extending the head. Um, you know, extending your arm, extending your forearm, looks different than extending your upper arm, which is different than extending your head, meaning look up. Okay? That's extending your head. You're basically just looking up. Now, again, you have to match the splenius capitis with extending head. You say, Coach, what's extending head? Does it look like this? I mean, I can't tell you that. All right? So you, you have to know what that looks like as well as how it's defined. Okay? So extending the head is basically just looking up. All right? Sternocleidomastoid, one of my favorite muscles because of its name. But it's associated with what? Sternum? It's mastoid process. Sternocleido. Clavicle, all right? So, it originates in your manubrium, in your clavicle, all right? It inserts itself in the mastoid bone and the mastoid, I'm mean, sorry, the occipital bone and mastoid process. So, it kind of goes back here. It's this muscle when you turn your head, that muscle right there. That's the sternocleidomastoid right here. Yeah. If you turn it really, really hard, this muscle right here. Oh, yeah. Okay? Yep, that muscle right there. All right? See, when you do that, though, you're just showing your platysma, which you don't have to know. But when you turn your head, you can really see it, okay? Especially on girls that have, like, tiny necks, you really, really see it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You can turn your head that way. Hard. Yeah, there you go. It's that one right there. I know it, like, pops out really far. Okay, so... What does the sternocleidomastoid do? 
All right, it rotates and flex the head. Now, if you use both of them at the same time, that's flexing the head. You're just looking down. If you use one or the other, you rotate your head. Okay? No, that's not tilt your head. Rotate your head. Two moves. Two moves. Yeah, there's two of them. Yeah, there's, there's one on this side, there's one on this side. So those muscles are paired. So but flexing your head is what? Looking down. Okay. Rotating your head just means side to side. And that's if you that's if you just use one or the other. Okay? Yes. You're using both at the same time you look down. You're flexing your head. Okay? Um, trapezius. These are commonly called your traps. Um, so it's this one right here. Turn around. This one right here, okay, and it kind of makes a trapezoid right here, all right, so it does that, all right, um, here it is right here, this side is actually the trapezius is removed, okay, it's actually removed on that side, if you go back and look up at the, this one, here's your trapezius right here, right here, all right, um, Trapezius originates from occipital bone and also some cervical and thoracic vertebrae, so it goes down for pretty far. It originates here, and it's inverted. I'm sorry, it's, in, it's um, inserted in the clavicle. All right, you don't really move your clavicle a whole lot, but it's inserted there. The acromion process and the scapular spine of your scapula. Okay. Um, now the book kind of describes it a little bit different. I just say rotate your shoulders because what it's combining, it's combining elevating your shoulders and retracting your shoulders. So anytime you do this movement up and back, you're focusing your trapezius. All right, you can actually do back first and then up. All right, it doesn't really depress it too much, meaning take it down, but it elevates and retracts. Okay, that's your trapezius. You see, sometimes you see weightlifters holding dumbbells, really heavy dumbbells, and they're just doing this, right? Now, sometimes they just go up. Yeah. Well, if they're just going up, they're only working the top part of it. They're not really working this part of it. So if you want to work both, you go up and back and roll your shoulders. Okay? Coach Bob. He knows that. Guys, I'm, I promise you. Um... Coach Gofield could teach circles around me with muscle and skeletal mass. But yeah, you're, there's there's lots of muscles inserted and originated from the scapula. A ton. So anytime you move, anytime you move your shoulders, it's acting on your scapula. Every time. Okay? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter which direction. Okay? Alright, so you rotate your shoulders. So it looks like this. Okay? Levator scapulae. Um, originates from the transverse processes of the C1 to C4, so it's kind of up high, all right, kind of from your neck. Serves as a scapula, you don't have to know where on this one. And all it does is elevate your scapula. Just moves it up. It pretty much tells you what it's doing. And that's a good thing with some of these. Some of these you can kind of figure out by the name. Others, maybe not so much. You know, like a trapezius is based on its shape. Sternocleidomastoid is based on its origin and insertion. Uh, split his half, his half of this has to do a little bit with the head. So, anyway, we are going to stop right there. Okay, we have covered let's see, four, six, eight, ten. We've covered 11 of the 47 muscles you need to know. Okay, so we're almost a quarter done. All right.